right, so do you have eczema but you don't know what kind it is, what caused it, or how to go about healing your eczema? I feel ya. I have been there. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing eight eczema types so that you can find out what type you have and begin your eczema healing journey. Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Britt Brings at Home. I'm Britt and I've had eczema for over 10 years and I learned how to heal my eczema naturally. And you can see more about my eczema healing journey in this video. I will link it down below also. And I have a whole playlist of videos all about healing eczema naturally. But that's a tricky thing because eczema can be caused by different things and so it requires different remedies and treatments to heal it. So before you even go about healing your eczema, it's important to know what types of eczema there are and what type you have so that you can begin to heal your eczema. And let me tell you, eczema healing is a journey. It takes time. I know a lot of people are looking for that quick fix and they want to know what they can do to be healed of eczema in one week. Well, most likely it's going to take longer than a week to heal your eczema and even if you do get rid of it pretty quickly it still takes time to continue to heal the underlying cause so that it doesn't continue to flare up. So as I'm sharing these eight eczema types I want you to look at the pictures listen to what I'm saying and try to figure out which type of eczema it is that you have or maybe you have a child that has eczema and you're trying to figure out what type they have. I really recommend being your own health advocate. A lot of times we go to the doctors and they want to give us a quick fix to heal the symptoms, but they don't actually always get to the root cause of what's causing this and what can we do to keep it from happening again. And a lot of times doctors are focused on the one thing instead of holistically in the whole body and how different things are connected with each other because most of the time eczema is not just a skin issue there's something going on there there's something else going on usually inside the body usually eczema is an outward sign of something that's happening inside the body so it's important to get to that root cause because without getting to your root cause you're not going to heal your eczema for good. So listen to these things and once you figure out what type of eczema you think you have, let me know in the comments. And you may have had more than one of these types of eczema or you might have more than one right now. Someone that has one type of eczema is more likely to have another type of eczema too. Okay, so here we go. Here are the eight eczema types. Number one is the most common one. This is probably the one that most of you are going to have. It is atopic dermatitis and this is an autoimmune condition where your immune system actually attacks your skin. So an autoimmune disease is when your body actually attacks itself and autoimmune diseases can show up in different places of the body depending on where your immune system is attacking. So it can attack your thyroid, you can have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it can attack your joints in rheumatoid arthritis, it can attack your nervous system in multiple sclerosis or MS, and it attacks your skin in atopic dermatitis. And this is one that has a lot to do with what you eat and also has a lot to do with stress. It has a lot to do with lots of different things that are going on in your body and it can develop anytime. It can develop as a baby, as a child, as an adult, anytime in life. I developed atopic dermatitis as an adult and so our overactive immune system causes inflammation to happen and it's inflammation on the skin in eczema and it actually damages the skin, causes it to dry out and get really flaky and itchy. And you get these patches of dry skin and it can be anywhere on your body. There's no rhyme or reason where it happens to be. And it will change colors. It can be pink, red when it's really irritated and inflamed and purple and brown. It does depend on like the color of 
your skin. And it's itchy and it makes you want to scratch. And the more you scratch it, the worse it gets. And the thicker it can get and it can actually develop into another type of eczema, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. And because our immune system is overactive, if you have atopic dermatitis, you most likely have other things like allergies, seasonal allergies or food allergies, as well as asthma and even another type of autoimmune disease. Okay, eczema type number two is contact dermatitis. And when I first got eczema and I was first starting to learn about eczema, I thought all eczema was what contact dermatitis is. I thought it's because of something touching your skin. You know, I thought it was just a skin issue. Something's on my skin, I'm touching something, it's irritating my skin and causing it to itch. Well, that's not what most eczema is, but contact dermatitis is. Contact dermatitis is when your skin comes in contact with an allergen or an irritant, something that's irritating your skin. So it causes inflammation on the spot where that irritant touched your skin. And it could be caused from a number of things. It could be from um, poison ivy, it could be from fragrances in your body care products or your home cleaning products, you know, that you spray and the mist can get onto your body. It can be from your jewelry, from your makeup, all kinds of things. When I first got eczema, the very first type that I had was contact dermatitis. I got it on my eyelids and I had no idea what it was at the time or what was causing it, but come to find out it was contact dermatitis because of my eyeshadow I was wearing. A lot of eyeshadows and other makeup have heavy metals and fragrances and other irritants in them that can cause contact dermatitis and even other types of eczema. So that's one reason why it's important to switch the products that you're using to safer, cleaner products. So I use Beauty Counter for the most part for my makeup and then I also do some homemade natural products as well. And you might not get contact dermatitis the very first time that your skin touches this irritant, but the more you are exposed to it, the more of a chance you have that you will get contact dermatitis. And it's gonna be red, itchy, dry. It can even have little bumps and look like hives. Okay, this next one I know all too well. Number three is dishydronic, dishyd dishydronic eczema or hand eczema. This is when you get little itchy, fluid-filled bumps, kind of like blisters and it's usually gonna be on your fingers, your hands, your feet, and your toes. When you have those little blisters, it is so itchy. I had a flare-up of this type of eczema about a month ago, and when it was at its worst, like I felt like my hands were on fire and I just wanted to cut them off to keep from having this itchiness. It was so bad. And your skin's gonna be red, it's gonna be super itchy, you're gonna have these blisters, and then these blister type things will start to go away and your skin will start to dry out more, and then it'll be more like a topic dermatitis. It'll be dry, flaky, and not as red. And when it's like that, it's still itchy, but it's not as itchy as when those blister things are there. Because eczema makes your skin so dry and it's also itchy and you scratch, your skin could have open cuts on it. And if you have those little blisters, you know, you might try to pop them and your skin opens up. So it is possible to get infection. So that's why it's important to try your best not to scratch or try not to pop those little blisters and to keep your hands moisturized when it is super dry. Okay, eczema type number four is neurodermatitis. And the first part of that word, neuro, is talking about the nerves, the nervous system. And of course, dermatitis is when there's inflammation on the skin. So neurodermatitis has to do with nerves from inflammation in the skin. There's actually nerve damage because of the itchiness, the inflammation that's going on in your skin. Okay, so neurodermatitis happens when your skin is itchy. It could be from like an insect bite or from poison ivy or from another type of eczema and you scratch it, your skin becomes more irritated and causes more inflammation and it actually damages the nerves in that spot where you're scratching. 
So this type of eczema doesn't spread and it doesn't show up anywhere in the body. It shows up where you scratch. And the more you scratch it, the worse it becomes and your skin actually starts to get really thick and leathery looking. And yeah, scratching just makes it much worse. So if you have a topic dermatitis or dyshydronic eczema or another type of eczema, try to keep from scratching it so that you don't develop this neurodermatitis. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so that you get notifications because I will be coming out with lots more videos on eczema and tips for you to help keep you from scratching, help keep that dryness down and to help you actually heal your eczema. Eczema type number five is numular or discoid eczema. And this is where you get little circle patches of eczema and it kind of looks like a coin. So discoid actually means coin. And so you have these patches that look like coins in different places on your body. And you might think it's a ringworm, but it's not. It's eczema, it's a different type of eczema. This type is usually on the legs, the arms, and the abdomen. And the skin turns colors. It can be red, brown, purple, pink. It can even ooze out liquid. And what do you know, this type of eczema can be caused from other types of eczema and other irritants like insect bites, heavy metals, scrapes, and infections. And this one is more common in men than women. Most of the other types of eczema are more common in women. Eczema type number six is stasis or varicose eczema. I can't go by either name. And this one is more common in older people. So you think varicose, varicose veins, you know, are more common in older people. And so this varicose eczema is also common in older people. And just like all the other types of eczema, it's not just a skin issue. This one is actually a cardiovascular issue. This one is actually a result of poor blood circulation in the body. And so if you have poor circulation, you know, you're not getting good blood flow in your legs. And a lot of times, you know, you get those varicose veins, people might get a lot of swelling in their lower legs and their ankles. And that's where they would get this varicose eczema and their skin will turn red or even dark purple. Like I said, it's not a skin issue. Even though it's showing up as inflammation on the skin, it's a blood circulation issue, a cardiovascular issue. So that's why it's just so important, no matter what type of eczema you have, to get to the root cause. Know what type of eczema it is and then get to the root cause. And I'm going to be going more into the different causes of these types of eczema in the future. Number seven is seborrheic dermatitis. I hope I'm saying that right. So this one shows up on oily places of the body. So it might show up on the scalp, the face, like especially that T zone, the forehead, nose, chin, and underarms. This one is caused mostly from stress and also from hormone changes. And it's more common in men than women, but anyone can have it. It shows up in babies as cradle cap. Cradle cap is actually a type of eczema. And it shows up in teens and adults, you know, in that face eczema, underarm eczema, back eczema. So for that type of eczema, as well as all the types of eczema, really, it's really important to work on your stress management. Okay, number eight is asteatotic eczema. And this type of eczema is mostly in older people. And it's usually on the shins, the thighs, the back, the abdomen. If you have this type of eczema, your skin is gonna be really dry rough and scaly. So those are the eight types of eczema. I hope you were able to kind of figure out which type of eczema you are dealing with so that you can figure out what exactly is causing your eczema and what you can do to heal it. I wish you all the best. I hope you find healing soon. Definitely subscribe to my channel and come back for my next eczema video where I will be diving deeper into one of these types, the dyshydronic eczema which I recently had a flare up with. I am still in the process of healing from this type. You'll never believe what caused it. <laughs> Something that I did not even think about that would cause eczema. So I'll be sharing what causes dyshydronic eczema and how to heal from it in a video coming up soon. So I hope you stick around and come back for more and thank you so much for watching. Bye.